Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about terazosin. What is this drug terazosin? This drug is a selective alpha 1 receptor blocker and here we can observe the suffix azosin. We have few of the other drugs within this category with same suffix. For example, prazosin, doxazosin, both of these drugs belongs to same category. Still we have other drugs like alfugeosin, tamsulosin which are having somewhat different suffix. But here these three drugs are having the same suffix and they are selective alpha 1 receptor blockers. What is this suffix indicates here? Here the suffix is azosin which indicates they are having quinazolin moiety. So from the quinazolin we can take the azolin but here L is replaced with S. So S is nothing but they are selective. So terazosin, prazosin, doxazosin, all these are selective alpha 1 receptor blockers with quinazolin moiety in their structure. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this terazosin, how this drug acts, what is the mechanism, side effects, precautions, clinical indications of this drug we will discuss in this video. One of the important clinical indication of terazosin is in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. So this is the normal prostate tissue where it is not enlarged. But when this prostate tissue is going to be enlarged, it can produce one of the condition where there is decreased urinary flow because of constriction of urethra and increased urinary frequency because of pressure produced by enlarged prostate tissue on the bladder. So in these patients, we can observe increased urinary frequency but still the urinary flow is reduced so they cannot empty the bladder completely. Such condition is called as benign prostatic hyperplasia commonly known as BPH. So in order to treat this condition we can use the terazosin. Here one of the target of terazosin is the alpha 1 receptors. These alpha 1 receptors are present at bladder base as well as neck and they are present on the prostate capsule as well as urethra. So at all these locations alpha 1 receptors are present. Now terazosin can block these alpha 1 receptors thereby can produce relaxation at all these sites. So in this way terazosin can increase the urinary flow and decrease the urinary urgency. Now we have discussed that terazosin is a selective alpha 1 receptor blocker. These alpha 1 receptors are not only present at the bladder neck and prostate capsule but they are majorly present at systemic blood vessels. So by blocking these alpha 1 receptors at the vascular smooth muscle, terazosin acts as direct vasodilator. That's why this drug is used as antihypertensive. But in the treatment of hypertension, this drug is used as second line agent because it produces direct vasodilatation resulting in reflex tachycardia. And already we have discussed that terazosin can be used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia BPH. But at this indication this drug is not selective that means it is not selective for the subtypes of alpha 1 receptors. We have few other drugs like tamsulosin which is a selective alpha 1 A receptor blocker again indicated for treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of terazosin. Here we can observe it is having the quinazolin moiety with two nitrogens. Let us give the numbering. We can start the numbering from this nitrogen. So this is one, two, three, four and so on. So here amine group is present at the fourth position. So the suffix of the name is nothing but quinazolin 4 amine. Similarly it is having the methoxy group at sixth and seventh position. So we can write this as 6,7 dimethoxy. And second position it is having the piperazine side chain attached by first position. So we can indicate this as 2 dash piperazine 1 aisle. To this piperazine ring at the fourth position carbonyl group is attached which is further attached with the oxolane ring. And this oxolane ring is attached by second position. Now we can write this side chain as 4 dash oxolane 2 carbonyl. So that is the complete name of terazosin. Here para indicates 
it is having a tetrahydrofuran ring in the acyl chain. Now let us see how this drug acts. Terazosin mainly acts on vascular smooth muscle, bladder neck as well as prostate tissue. At all these locations alpha 1 receptors are present which are G protein coupled receptors with 7 transmembrane units. Now norepinephrine which is released by neuronal stimulation can bind to these alpha 1 receptors which activates the phospholipase C system. This phospholipase C is a cleavage enzyme which can cleave phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate into two important components. One of the component is the IP3 inositol triphosphate. Similarly, another component is the DAG diacylglycerol. Now, IP3 can increase the intracellular calcium levels by acting on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This sarcoplasmic reticulum is expressed with IP3 receptors. Now, IP3 can bind to these IP3 receptors, which brings the calcium outside the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm. Similarly, diacylglycerol can interact with the cell membrane and it can stimulate the protein kinase C, which is going to further activate the inward going calcium channels. So, this results in the entry of calcium into the cell, which further increases the intracellular calcium levels. In this way, when the alpha 1 receptors are activated, intracellular calcium levels are increased which produce a contraction. So, in case of vascular smooth muscle, it results in the vasoconstriction. Similarly, it can also produce a contraction of the bladder neck, prostate capsule and urethra, which reduce the urinary flow. Now, terazosin acts as antagonist at these alpha 1 receptors. It can block these alpha 1 receptors, thereby it can inhibit the norepinephrine activity, resulting in the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle, as well as bladder neck, prostate capsule and urethra. All these produce increased vasodilatation and increased urinary flow. Now let us see the precautions of terazosin. One of the important precautions of terazosin is that this drug can produce one of the syndrome intraoperative floppy iris syndrome commonly known as IFIS. This syndrome is observed during the cataract surgery. In this surgery a new artificial lens is going to be incorporated into the eye. And this lens is incorporated by FACO emulsification method. In this method, a small incision or micro incision is made on the cornea. But for this, before the surgery, the pupil should be dilated. So, midriatics are going to be added to the eye such that they produce pupillary dilatation. But in case of intraoperative floppy iris syndrome, even by addition of midriatics, we cannot observe any proper pupillary dilatation. Similarly, the pupillary dilatation may be reduced to produce the meiosis and we can also observe flaccid iris. The softening of iris can be observed which may interact with the surgical procedure. So, terazosin can increase this IFIS syndrome. So, case should be taken before the cataract surgery and any of symptoms are observed then terazosin should be avoided. Similarly, another important precaution of the terazosin is the orthostatic hypotension. Since this drug acts as a vasodilator, it produces hypotension which changes with the body posture. So, it is also denoted as postural hypotension. Because of this vasodilatation, we can observe decrease in the blood pressure in the patients. And as the blood pressure is reduced, we can observe a set of symptoms such as dizziness, lightheadedness, vertigo, syncope. So, all these are observed with terazosin, which are common with selective alpha 1 blockers. Similarly, we can observe fatigue in the patients. All these effects produced by terazosin are observed within first few doses of the terazosin and they are called as first dose effects. In order to minimize these first dose effects, the lowest dose of terazosin should be initiated, which is then followed by increasing the dose to avoid these first dose effects. What are the side effects? The side effects of terazosin are again related to vasodilatory effects. So, this drug can produce hypotension, palpitations. Because of hypotension, it can increase the sympathetic activity, which produces the palpitations. Similarly, it can produce headache, dizziness, syncope, vertigo, somnolence, sleepiness in the patients. Similarly, it can produce dyspnea and upper respiratory tract infections, resulting in rhinitis nasal congestion. 
because the nasal blood vessels are relaxed which produce accumulation of the nasal fluids resulting in nasal congestion similarly other side effects like blurred vision peripheral edema urinary tract infections and priapism the painful erection can be observed in the patients what are the drug interactions one of the significant drug interactions observed with phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors and terazosin drugs like sildenafil tadalafil vardenafil all these are phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors these drugs can act on the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme which is actually converting the cyclic gmp into the gmp so this metabolism is prevented by these drugs which increase the cyclic gmp levels and when these cyclic gmp levels are increased it produces vasodilatation. Now, terazosin can also block the alpha 1 receptors, thereby it can produce a vasodilatation. So, when these two drugs are combined, they can produce a severe vasodilatation. So, care should be taken when this terazosin is combined with phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors, and the lowest dose should be prescribed in order to minimize severe vasodilatation and its complications. How it is given? Terazosin is given as a tablet as well as capsules and the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia this drug should be given at a low dose initially so the initial dose is 1 mg given at bedtime particularly in order to avoid first dose effects this drug is given at bedtime at a low dose so started at 1 mg dose then the dose can be increased to the 2 mg followed by 5 mg and finally the dose can be increased up to 10 mg which is the effective dose for the treatment of bph even the dose can be increased up to 20 mg but at most of the times 10 mg of terazosin works for bph similarly for the treatment of hypertension again it is given at an initial dose of 1 mg at bedtime and the dose is slowly escalated in between 2 to 5 mg and then to the 10 mg and finally it can be achieved to 20 mg which is given once daily at bedtime so that's about the terazosin terazosin is a selective alpha 1 blocker even this drug is selective for alpha 1 receptors over the alpha 2 receptors but still it is not selective for the subtypes of alpha 1 receptors such as alpha 1a and alpha 1b receptors even it is not selective for alpha 1 subtypes but still this drug can be indicated for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia as well as a vasodilator in the treatment of hypertension so this drug can produce vasodilatation which results in the first dose effects producing orthostatic hypotension dizziness vertigo syncope lightheadedness and fatigue in the patients in order to avoid all these first dose effects this drug is given at low initial dose and the initial dose of this drug is started at 1 mg at bedtime this drug can produce one of the syndrome intraoperative floppy iris syndrome where the pupils are not dilated properly and they can produce flaccid iris which may interact with the surgical procedure in the cataract similarly terazosin can interact with other vasodilators and other antihypertensive agents particularly with the phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors it can produce severe vasodilatation so when these drugs are prescribed low dose should be selected in order to avoid severe vasodilatory effects so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video